What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Lions video. The Detroit Lions rookie mini camp closed up yesterday and we got a first look at this new Detroit Lions coaching regime as well as the newest incoming players to this Lions franchise. Now in today's video we are going to be talking about of course everybody that attended the mini camp and also some of the biggest takeaways from the camp in general. Now if you're new to the channel and you're enjoying the Detroit Lions content Content, please consider liking the videos and subscribe to the channel. It takes two seconds out of your day to do so. It's quick, free, and easy, and you'd be helping the channel out more than you could possibly know. So if you could do that, take those two seconds to like and subscribe. I'd be greatly appreciative for it. But all that being said, and without any further ado, let's get right into the Detroit Lions rookie mini camp, all of all the players that attended, and of course, the biggest takeaways. Now, as I said, this was our first opportunity to get to see not only the Detroit Lions' newest batch of players, but also the first official training session by this new Detroit Lions regime. Now, the Lions hosted 32 different players, and they had 32 total members in attendance for this camp. Now, not all of them were rookies. There were a couple of first-year players, such as Jalen Elliott out of Notre Dame, Elise Mack, another tight end that I believe is a first-year player, is a guy that is going into a second year play to season but for the most part it was primarily rookies as either they were drafted or undrafted free agents now with that being said six of the seven drafted rookies were in attendance for mini camp you have of course levi on who wore number 75 for training camp you have Aline mcneil who wore number 54 you have Efeti melifanu who was rocking the 26 you have amin ross st brown the best player from the draft wearing that crisp 14 Derek barnes wearing number 55 as well as Jermar Jefferson who was wearing number 28. Now, of course, all of these numbers are subject to change. These are the numbers that they are expected to plan for the preseason. However, these are not necessarily numbers that they are going to be stuck with for the rest of their career or even for the rest of the season. I know there was some talk that maybe a Fetty Melifanu might be wearing the number two, and I'm sure there are going to be some number changes here and there as the season progresses, as the preseason goes through, and as the regular season approaches. Now, with that being said, there was a lot of undrafted free agent talent. There were 13 UDF talents at this rookie mini camp and not all of them are going to make the roster not all of them are going to have huge impacts but here I wanted to highlight some of the big name guys and guys that I think actually have a chance of making it to the roster now starting off with Jonathan Adams Jr. the wide receiver out of Arkansas State we've talked about him a couple times he's a big body jump ball contested catch kind of a player I didn't hear a lot about him I didn't hear a lot from him from training camp but of course we are expecting big things from him as an undrafted free agent Sage Surratt is the same way I didn't hear a lot about the rookies and I didn't really hear a lot of like good or bad there wasn't a ton of news to come out of rookie camp whether it be one person looking particularly great or particularly bad it was kind of just a first look kind of first glance basis so I don't have a lot of information to report on except for when it comes to one of the drafted players but I will get into that in just a moment now Sage Surratt attended he was a guy that again Lions fans are expecting a lot out of and he's expected to compete against Jonathan Adams Jr. for really that last wide receiver spot you have D'Angelo Amos, the safety out of Virginia, a guy that is a pretty good deep middle fielding safety, a guy that has some range, a guy that has some ball skills, and a player that is getting a little bit of buzz to maybe have a chance to make it to the final roster and especially make it on the practice squad. You have Tavante Beckett, the linebacker out of Marshall, a guy that could be a special teams player, a guy that could have a little bit of an impact on special teams, but a guy that unfortunately probably won't make the roster, but a guy that I have heard a couple really good things about from different people, and a guy that, as I said, a guy that could be a key special teams contributor next season. Now, Rakeem Boyd, the running back from Arkansas, was also in attendance. Again, don't have a ton of news on him, but we've talked about him before. I'm expecting very big things from Rakeem Boyd. Jake Hosman, the tight end out of Ohio State, was in attendance. He's a big body guy, is a really good athlete. I believe scored a 9.2 out of 10 on his RAS score. He's a guy that I think could make the roster as the last tight end. Of course, we have TJ, we have Darren Fells, and I think we are looking for maybe one or two more big body wide receivers. Hunter Bryant's been kind of on and off the roster over the past couple of weeks. Has kind of been on, he's kind of been off. He's, I believe he's on like some injury reserve list right now for the offseason, so he doesn't count towards a roster spot. The Lions, I think, are looking for at least one more tight end or at least one more security blanket 
could add tight end just in case something does end up happening. So I do think that Jake Hosman could end up making the roster there as well. Tommy Kramer, the guard from Notre Dame, we talked about him on the live stream yesterday. I think he's a really good player, was a starting member of the Notre Dame offensive line. Notre Dame are, always has one of the top offensive lines in college football. Tommy was a starting member for that for a couple of years. He was really, really solid at Notre Dame. I don't think he's ever going to quite develop into a starting caliber guard, but I do think he could be a big piece and a good depth piece for the Detroit Lions as they look to really not only build up the top end of their offensive line, but also secure the depth in that offensive line. I think he could make it as the second right guard on the roster, leaving, of course, with Jonah Jackson to start, maybe Big V on the other side, leaving Logan Stenberg and Tommy Kramer as your two back up guards. Now, Javon McKinley was also a wide receiver that attended the mini camp. He is a wide receiver out of Notre Dame. He showed a lot of flash. I think he's also going to be competing for that last roster spot with Jonathan Adams Jr. and Sage Surratt. I think he's a little bit more crisp as a route runner. I think he has a little bit more separation ability, but of course, he's not necessarily a guy that's going to make the highlight grab that maybe Jonathan Adams Jr. is going to grab. So they have a, they have a little bit of difference in skill sets, but I think all three of those undrafted free agent wide receivers are players that could all make a spot, all could make a push for the active roster. And I think all three of them at the very worst are going to end up on the practice squad. Now, the last player that was in attendance, the last undrafted free agent that I think has a chance to make the roster is Drake Jackson, the center out of Duke. Now, he was looked at as one of the highest marketed, highest highest anticipated free agent, or free agent, the undrafted free agents in this entire class. I believe he was considered to be a top 10 UDFA in this class, and the Lions got him right away. Of course, as I said, being a big time UDFA, a lot of teams were calling a lot of different people's an interest in him, and he decided to come to the Detroit Lions. Now, he's not going to start over Frank Ragnall, but he's a guy that only gave up one sack and I believe four years of college play. He's a really, really good player. He's going to be a great backup in Detroit, and I don't know if he's going to make the team. I don't know how it's going to play out, but if I had to guess right now, I would say that Drake Jackson, the center from Kentucky, is actually going to be one of the better UDFAs in this class. And if Frank Ragnall if for some reason does miss a game, if for some reason he does not you know, if for some reason Fred Gragnall maybe gets injured again or something like that happens, maybe he gets ill and he just has to miss a game here and there, I would have confidence that Drake Jackson could step in and we could still see a high level of play for him. I'm very excited to see all of these rookies in the preseason. I think in the preseason, you're going to see almost every single one of these rookies have a huge impact. Drake Jackson should be a starter, probably the second tight end in preseason. Tommy Kramer, second right guard, right alongside Logan Stenberg. I think you're going to see a lot of targets for Jonathan Adams, Sage Surratt, as well as Javon McKinley here and there throughout the preseason. You know, I think you're going to see D'Angelo almost make some plays. I think you're going to see a couple other guys in this class make some plays. And of course, the actual drafted rookies are going to have to earn their spot as well. Now, with that being said, there were also five other players at this camp that were kind of on a tryout basis. They weren't official members of the team. They're not official members of the team yet, but they are guys that were there on tryout basis. And of course, if they do end up getting a contract, I will make a video letting you know. Now, those five players were Alex Brown, the cornerback out of South Carolina, Elijah Holder, the safety from Stanford, Nick Pickett, the safety from Oregon, and A.J. Taylor, the wide receiver from Wisconsin. Now, there is very little footage to go off of. There are very few takeaways from this actual camp and very few things that have come out as of right now. I'm sure more will come out as the week progresses, as, you know, press conferences happen, as, you know, we just get to see more and more and more, and as the season comes closer. But I will say there were a few takeaways. Amon Ross St. Brown looked incredibly skilled, looked very, very good, very comfortable as an NFL wide receiver, made a couple really good catches. If you saw the highlights that did come out of the Lions training camp, it looked really good. Amon Ra looks like a very good wide receiver, and he does have a mindset. He was quoted saying, I'm here to take somebody's job, which again is a mindset that I I love seeing in the rookie. You know, there's a lot of different people from different sources that are just all together kind of in this unanimous decision that the Lions are different this season. The Lions, this training camp is, they're working hard as they've always done. They are very serious. They are working hard. They are working together to get better, but there's also now an element of fun. There are guys that are not just working and, you know, that's all they're focused on. There are guys that are working, but having fun. They're improving. They're getting better, but they're having a good time doing it. They're enjoying playing for the Detroit Lions. And that is what we expected as Lions fans. That is exactly what we thought was going to be the culture. That's what we thought was going to be the atmosphere here in Detroit. And based off the first couple of days of rookie training camp, that seems to be 
the kind of camp, seems to be the kind of franchise that Dan Campbell is looking to run. One in which the Lions work hard, one in which that they work their butts off every single day at practice, they work their butts off every single day on the field, but a culture that you can have fun, you can enjoy. It's not all business 24-7. Dan Campbell understands that these are people. He understands that these are kids, that they're going to enjoy themselves, that they want to have fun. And that is kind of the biggest change in culture and the biggest takeaway that we have from this week. Now, with all that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Let me know down in the comments below, what rookie are you most excited to see in training camp, in preseason, and through the regular season? What rookie are you most excited to see hit the field? And of course, hopefully Penny Sewell gets a little bit better. He was the only rookie to miss training camp. But with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time, and as always, go Lions! Thank <laughs> you.